So I'll follow He heaven I'll be your name Your kingdom We just thank you that you are here right now. God, we just thank you for your manifest presence that's already here. Yeah, God, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. And I just was reminded when me and Michael, we were praying uh, yesterday, I saw a picture of an anvil, and that reminds like the weight, the weight of his presence and, you know, glory in the original translation means weight. And so, God, we thank you for the weight of your presence, that your tangible presence would just actually keep increasing tonight, just as you, you've, your train of the road filled the temple and it kept filling, that we ask us your presence would keep just filling this place. God, we just thank you that you are I am. I am is right now. It's not one day. It's not I was. It's not I will be. Your name is I am. You are a miracle worker now. You are the deliverer now. You are the prince of peace now. You are the father now. You're the savior now. You're the redeemer, the forgiver now. 
And so, God, we don't have to wait till tomorrow. It says now is the favorable time. And so, Father, right now, you are the healer now. You're the miracle worker now. So, Jesus, thank you that you paid the ultimate price. We don't have to climb the ladder. You came down to us. And we just say yes and amen to everything you've done already for us. Yeah, we just ask that you would just encounter, keep encountering your people right now. We don't have to end. We just actually, this is more coming. Yeah. And so God, even during the message, during this whole night, it's asked for healings and miracles and just your presence just to keep flowing. Thank you for the river does, that never runs dry. The river. Yeah. We just bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Give it up for the Lord and for the worship team. That was awesome. You guys can grab a seat. Glad you guys are here. I kind of like this new thing without the pulpit right here. I don't know. I feel like there's more like freedom or something. No walls here. And um, if you guys were here, glad you guys are here. This is a good celebration. We get to celebrate the king. Um, last Wednesday, I, just something really special happened during the, the meeting where just the joy of the Lord was just breaking out. And he, the joy was actually, quote, unquote, interrupting my sermon. So I was like, okay, Lord. So Holy Spirit, if you want to do that again, you're the one that runs the show. And so we just got to simply recognize what he wants to do. And just kind of step aside, you know, and uh, bless you, Mattias. Um, and so I want to actually open up with a testimony. Where's Ariel? Is Ariel here? Did you want to share that testimony? You're going to go outside? Okay. Okay, cool. You want to share that testimony? Yes. Okay, go for it. Hi, I'm Ariel. I live in Huntington Beach, but um, my friends moved here a month ago, so... I just started coming out here to chase the glory, really. <laughs> so I just drive up every week. Um, <laughs> it's been so fun. Um, so like a month ago, um, after um, Wednesday night, we went to In-N-Out. And um, a little backstory on my testimony. Um, three years ago, I had an incident happen where um, a girl... It was really late at night and I heard a girl screaming and I ran out of my place because I thought she needed help. And it turns out she was on drugs um, and she brutally beat me up. And, <laughs> sorry, um, Holy Spirit's here, that's why I'm laughing, woo! Um, yeah, and something really broke in me that night. Um, physically, I was really messed up um, in the hospital, but something broke in my spirit, um, and it ruined me, and one of the main things that had happened was my whole shoulder was torn, um, in different places, and so for three years, I struggled in really chronic pain, um, I'm talking about 10 out of 10 pain, they wanted to do surgery, and at the time, we just couldn't afford it, and so um, I just lived in that pain. I couldn't work out. I couldn't do the things that I love to do. It broke me. Um, and I'd stand up every single Sunday in church for healing. I was like, I'm believing for this healing. Like, it's going to come. Like, it's mine. I know it. And I don't know if you guys have ever felt this before, but, like, when you walk away and you didn't get healed, there's something that just, like, you're just like, I know that, like, I have faith, God, but, like, why not today, you know? And, um, but I just kept believing. I kept like standing up every single time. I was like, me, 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 me. I want this. I want this. Um, and so for three years, I really struggled. And I mean, with my husband, I would literally cry in his arms weekly because it was so bad. And then I dealt with reliving that trauma. And so fast forward to a month ago, we were at in and out after um, a service and we were all laughing about something. And then Daniel was like, oh, I feel pain in my shoulder. Like someone needs healing in their shoulder. And I, like, and the way that he grabbed his shoulder on his left shoulder is exactly how I would walk around all the time, like just grabbing my shoulder. And I immediately lit up. And I know that like 
Daniel has such a gift from the Lord for healing, but I just knew it was my time, and I was just so excited because I was like, it's me, like there's no one else here, it's me. <laughs> I was like really like, this is mine, I need this. And I was just like, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And um, so we prayed, and we prayed some more times, and he's like, it's not gone yet, it's not gone yet. Um, and it was wild because I felt like every single time he prayed, like I started feeling the pain go away, but it was like he had to keep praying because there was so much that the enemy used against me and shame and different things that I felt from something that was a complete accident, but he used so many things to just weigh on me. And so every single time that they like prayed, it was lifting off me. And at one of the times, it was probably like the fifth time, um, I was like, wait, what's the date? What's the date? And I grabbed my phone in the middle of prayer. I'm like, what's the date? What's the date? And it was the three-year anniversary of when the incident happened, and I lost it. Because I just thought, how amazing is the Lord that he would be so perfect in his timing to remind me that he's been there every single moment through all of this. And then I was just thinking about three years and what like the Bible says about the number three, and it means divine wholeness, divine completion, divine perfection. And I am just like undone the fact that Jesus needed this, like he needed to use this for me to really have that deep faith that like to believe for healing. And now I have this deep faith of like, I'm gonna believe for everyone's healing because he also has to teach us something within that. And like, it needed to happen. Like, I just think the Father heard my cries for so long, and he's spoken so much to me over this. And so I'm just so grateful, and I just feel like if you're waiting for a miracle to happen, like, just keep knocking on the door of the heart of the Lord because he's going to answer. And so I just feel like whoever needs to hear that tonight, like, your healing and miracle is coming. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> So thank, thank you for sharing, but you're not done yet. You're going to pray over the people for healing right now. And so right now, if you guys have pain, you need a miracle, a healing, I want you guys just to stand up, and then Ariel's just going to pray. She's going to release healing. Yes. Oh, Jesus, you're so good. Holy Spirit, we thank you that your presence is so thick in this room, Father. Every single person that's standing, God, is in need of a miracle, Holy Father, we just ask that you would just surround every single person, lay your hands over them, Father. We ask for an outpouring of your spirit of healing right now, Jesus. We just say break right now anything that's holding anyone back, any infirmities. We just pray from the top of their head to the soles of their feet that you would align their bodies with heaven and bring it into the perfect alignment of heaven, Jesus. We just pray divine wholeness, completion, and perfection over every single person in this room, God. We just release it, Jesus. And I just pray over any single person that has um, maybe felt healed, but then pain came back. That's just the enemy. That's an assignment of the enemy. The Lord's called you to be healed. And so we just pray over that right now, Jesus, full healing right now. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Ariel. Let's give it up for Ariel. Thank you. And so a lot of times we'll pray, but then we forget to simply just check it out. And so I know you guys just sat down, but just kind of move it around, whatever that was that you needed healing for, just kind of check it out. I mean, if you go to the gas station, you got to check your tank if you need more gas. So same thing, if you need a healing. So let us know if like you seriously felt something, you felt something, even during the message, I don't know, at the end, let us know after. Because we want to celebrate what Jesus is doing, you know. Um, actually, we got one more quick. Where is Eric's son? Okay, you're going to share a Bible verse. Sweet. This is Luke. Here for Luke. <laughs> right on. Well, we thought it was pretty interesting that Daniel talked about the I am because this scripture comes from that section Jesus uh, from the burning bush, the I am that I am, and I felt it was pretty appropriate for, um, we've been talking about, you know, sharing the love of Jesus, sharing the gospel, discipling people, and this is what the Lord said. Now go, 
I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. Exodus 4.12. Wow. Hold on. <laughs> one more thing. Can you just say, now go? Like, can you say that one more time in the mic? Just to everyone, now go. Here you go. Now go. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you, Luke. So, yeah, this is fun. So, before prayer, I, I didn't know I was going to share this, but I think I'm supposed to just declare it in this place. Um, we were praying and before prayer uh, service as a prayer team, and um, the Lord spoke to me that... Um, the title of a movie called The River Runs Through It. And I felt like the Lord said that there's a, the river is actually not just around us, running past us, but is running through this place. The Holy Spirit is. And there's actually a real river under our... That's why you'll see the water squirting out of there on the curb. We have such a high water table. We do have water underneath. But so I really believe that the river is running through it. And that movie was about fly fishing. And in that, um, in, in fly fishing, you have to actually go into the river to cast the line, right? And, and to release, it's, it's called release. And so I really feel like the spirit of release is about to happen in this place. Holy Spirit is here and it's actually in this place. It's not around us, but we, it's coming through. And that we're, and if Michael wants to play jump in the river later, <laughs> jump, jump, jump in the river, but I can't sing, so I only think. But um, I actually feel like that we're called to go into the depths, go into the deep of the river and release whatever, you know, God puts in our hand, whatever gift, and release it to catch the fish. And so I just release that word that um, what God is saying about this place and what we're to be a part of in this place. So just be released and cast all your burdens on him and go, like little Luke said, Go and and re, and catch the fish, and um, we just say yes and amen to that. Okay, well, Lord, we just thank you for tonight. We just thank you for your anointing, and uh, yeah, we love you in Jesus' name. Hmm. I want to start off with a testimony. Uh, this happened I don't know how long ago, but there was this pastor named Sean Smith and he was in Monterey and he's walking by the just this kind of tarot reading card place and he felt just oppression and he felt like oh my gosh this is crazy um, I'm going to do the good Christian thing I'm going to walk back to my car and say a good prayer and then go home but as he's walking to his car the Lord said no you're going to walk back into that store and you're going to give a word to the lady that owns the place. And so he goes in there and he says, hey, can I speak with you? She's the owner. And there's a line of people wanting to get their cards read. She goes, hey, hold on for a second. So he goes over and looks at the books and just is kind of like, I don't know, looking at random books. And one of the books says, The Idiot Guide to Terror Reading. And he goes, man, you must, he thought this to himself. You must be an idiot to actually believe this stuff. And right when he thought that, the Holy Spirit gives him a download for the lady to tell her that I am your sign. And that when she was a kid, that she got um, hurt by religion and by the church. And then she went and met a European or Eastern guru guy who actually verbally abused her. So she's getting all these downloads. And, tell, and then the Lord says, tell her if she's lay, when she lays down this, this work that she's doing, that her true dream is going to come to fruition that she had as a child. So she's thinking either I'm really, or sorry, he's either thinking he's really crazy or he's really hearing the Lord. Because, you know, to make this stuff up, that's kind of gnarly. And so he goes over and talks to the lady and the late, he goes, I'm going to ask her a question. I'm going to listen to her first before I just tell her, hey, you need to do this or this. And as he asks her, he goes, hey, how do you get into the spirit realm? And she goes, well, you kind of do this, you do this. And then he goes, do you, know, do you want to know how I get in the spirit realm? And she goes, yeah, of course. 
and he goes, Jesus is the door. He, he is the only, he is the way, the truth, and the life in, in the spirit realm. And can I tell you what the creator of the universe thinks about you? You know, she's completely in Wiccan and all this demonic stuff. And she goes, of course. And he goes, the Lord, God told me to tell you that I am your sign. And she just starts weeping right there. She goes, last night I cried out to the cosmos and said, give me a sign. And literally the next day, you know, this guy, random guy says, I am your sign. And then he goes on to say that you were hurt by church and religion and that you met a, you know, a, a guru guy who taught you about terror reading. And, but you had a dream as a child. And actually, if you lay this down, that you're going to fulfill your purposes. So he says this to her. She's tripping out because everything is bam, 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 bam. You can't make this stuff up. And she goes, I want to know your Jesus. And gives her life to Jesus right there in the spot. Repents of her sin. And there's a line of uh, tarot reading. Like they're waiting in line for her. And she's doing this right in front of everyone. And she goes, guys, I'm done. And she picked up her paycheck and got plugged into a church and completely left that shop forever. And so the amazing thing that we get to bring an encounter to people who are not even looking for God. Well, she actually was looking for the cosmos or whatever. But we could bring an encounter with Jesus. And that encounter, people want to lay down their life. You know, he didn't have to tell her, you need to stop this or this. He brought the presence of the Lord to her in her situation and completely did a 180. And, you know, that is our responsibility that we would actually reconcile people to the Lord, not counting their trespasses against them. And that the blood of Jesus, like right now, is enough for everyone to have a relationship with God. Not one day, not if you go to church five days a week for six years, that actually right now, the blood of Jesus is sufficient to be in a relationship with the Father now, to hear His voice. And I think a lot of times we could put our hope in how, how well we could try to hear God's voice, but what if we put our hope in His ability to speak to us? Instead of putting our hope in our ability to follow Him, what about hoping in his ability to lead us. The last time I checked, a sheep is not the smartest animal. If you look at a sheep, they're not the smartest, but God says, my sheep hear my voice. But the sheep isn't the most brilliant, but the shepherd is so amazing at leading the sheep. And so instead of saying, God, what do I have to do? What I need to do is that, God, you're so good at leading me. You're so good at speaking to me. The focus is off of ourself and on to Jesus. Does that make sense? And so that's one thing I really, you know, in the, when they fell in the garden, all of a sudden they looked inward. They said, look at me, you know. And then they tried to put fig leaves on. But in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, they asked that the power of God, would be, they would become a witness where they're not looking inward anymore. They're looking outward. They're looking to Jesus and to other people. And that's freedom right there. I want to be free from myself. You know, introspection does not, is not a good savior. Last time I checked, the more you keep looking, the more stuff you see. I want to be free. And obviously we need to receive his love, but I want to be free from myself. I want to be looking outward every day. You know, the harvest is plentiful. And there was another, uh, I just like sharing testimonies because it just stirs faith. Um, I like the, mm. <laughs> there was a guy named Luke Holter and he was in this conference with like Bill Johnson and, and, and Bobby Connor. And then he, and it was in others. And so he's always in the and others category. So I'm cool with that. Um, and so he's given the responsibility to actually start the conference off by, you know, ministering. And so there's about like 500, maybe 1,000 people at this conference. And the Lord says, I want you to sing a song over the lady in the front row. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. But, and so he asked the Lord, hey, what, you know, Kim Walker, what Christian song do you want me to sing? And the Lord says, I want you to sing the song by Michael Jackson, You Are Not Alone. And so 
He goes, Lord, that's not on the Christian radio, though. <laughs> and then he goes, that's okay. Sometimes I'm not either on the Christian radio. So shots fired by the Lord. So anyway, I'll tell you what, there's some, there some songs out there that are not labeled Christian that are anointed from the Lord, that are communicating to the masses, you know. So anyways, he starts singing this song. I'm not going to sing it, but it goes like this. You're not alone. I'm here with you. I'm here to stay. He starts singing this. She starts weeping. And he's like, did I sing that bad? Like, am I that bad of a singer? And she goes, I just lost my husband. And I'm at literally alone in L.A. I don't, I don't feel like God actually saw me. And that exact song I have a tattoo of on like my back. Those exact lyrics that you sang. And so that God knows the details of our life. If he knows the hairs on our head, he knows how to get our attention. And God doesn't always have to use the Christian kind of lingo to get our attention. He could speak through a Michael Jackson song because he's God. And so sometimes we have this Christianese kind of language we always use. God wants to do things outside of the box of how we always expect him to reveal himself. And... But it takes like stepping out of the boat and not fearing man. You know, like a lot of times, I'm at least talking for myself, I care what people think more than what God thinks. And a lot of times we have this amazing word from the Lord or whatever, but then we go under, okay, well, what are people going to think? You know, then we, is everyone going to like this? And that's, that's pleasing man and not the Lord. And so that, it says the fear of the Lord is a snare. Proverbs 25, 29, 25. Sorry, what did I say? Oh, sorry. The fear of man brings a snare. I got quick correction. Wow. You guys are paying attention. Okay. Dang, that's good. No one's sleeping. That's good. Um, so I want to read this. This is Matthew 10, 27. It says, Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, your more value valuable than many sparrows. So a lot of times we don't realize that God actually knows the details of our life. Sometimes we think, well, God doesn't really see this. He doesn't really see this. But actually, if God knows how many hairs on our head, obviously he cares about how, that our rent is due. Obviously he cares that we need a car. And so sometimes we think, well, God doesn't really care about that. Well, he knows our hairs. So he cares about your rent, your provision, food on the table. And just realizing that, and it's like, God is so sovereign that it actually has to pass through the Father first before two sparrows fall to the ground. Like it actually has to go through the Father's filter to allow that to happen. And so realizing that, that brings like peace. And obviously things happen, we don't understand why, but God has things under control. Last time I checked, he's not freaking out on the throne. He's not like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen with the election or whatever. He's peaceful. You know, and obviously we have responsibility to do things, but I don't think he's panicking on the throne. Earth is his footstool. You know, he's the king. And he's the name above all names. And so, but the thing about the fear of man, it's actually something that we need to repent of. A lot of times, okay, don't get drunk, you know, don't cuss. Okay, God, forgive me. But a lot of times we don't repent for fearing man or pleasing people. But that's something that we got to simply like say, Father, forgive me for fearing man more than you. Like forgive me for being a people pleaser. That's something that we have to repent of. Like God, forgive me. Cleanse me from any, any people pleasing spirit. Like God, rid me of anything that's trying to please man over God. And I've dealt with that for many years, but it's like, God, I want to shut that door to it. I don't want to deal with it my whole life and kind of deal with it, kind of not. I want that thing cut off. I want, that th I want to be dead to pleasing man. 
Jesus did not please man. He was pleasing the Father. And when we care more about the fa- pleasing the Father, then that is the key. If I'm trying to not just please people, I'm so focused on trying not to please people, but I'm more concerned about pleasing the Father, then that's all that matters. He only did what he saw his Father do. And so realizing that, um, 1 Samuel 15, 24 It said, Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I've transgressed the Lord's commandment and your instructions because I fear the people and obey their voice. Like we've fallen short when we fear people. And like, here's the thing too. If the Lord told me, hey, I want you to just prophesy for an hour straight and just go bam, 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 or whatever. But a lot of times you're thinking, well, what are people going to think? And then we kind of alter the message because people might not like that. But if God tells you to do something, you got to simply obey him. It doesn't matter if everyone rejects it. If you obey the Lord, he's saying, well done. You know, when Jesus started his ministry, they end up trying to throw him off a cliff. So obviously, you know, if you're looking at that point of view, you're thinking, man, this guy isn't really cut out for ministry, but he was the son of God. Like, wow, they didn't really like your message, Jesus. But he was like, no, that was a great message. The people just were offended. They were probably thinking, well, you got to alter your message a little bit. You got to make it more seeker sensitive. And he's like, no, I'm going to please the Father. If they try to kill me again, that's their fault. They're missing out. You know, he, he even went far and said, hey, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, that's not a very, you know, sensitive thing topic there and people left and so like he's more concerned about bringing people to the father and preaching the gospel and the kingdom than wondering if people are going to like the message or not and I think a lot of times we try to water it down so everyone can receive it but that we do God a, a dis whatever you call it disfavor when we do that So Galatians 1.10, it says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Am I trying to please man? If, our, if I'm trying to please man, I'm not a servant of Christ. We're either man pleasers or a servant of Jesus. You can't be both. 1 Thessalonians 2.4, Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Thank you, Lord. You know, like if the Holy Spirit said right now, I want to release just some new joy that would just encounter people so strong that they hit the ground. You know, and it's like, Lord, if that's what you want to do, you just say yes. And, you know, instead of like, okay, is the intellect going to enjoy that? It's actually, no, is God going to want that to happen? And if God's power wants to show up so strong that people fall down on the ground, Like what God does in a moment can be something for a lifetime for someone. You know, like these encounters that we need, it's not just a feel good encounter. God deposits something in these moments to sustain a lifetime. You know, so I love the experience, but I love what God also does in the experience, the deposits he makes through these encounters. And so I say, don't resist. When the power of God is weighing you down, like, don't resist it, but don't fake it, too. You know, like, I'm not going to fake, oh, well, I just fell down. Like, I'm not going to do that. But, but if the, the presence of God is weighing you down, don't resist God. If he wants to bring you down to the ground, like, let him do it. And people say, well, where's that in the Bible? It's all over. I don't want to go through that, but it's, it's in a lot of places. <clears throat> and so it says in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 10, and this is like freedom when we can just let go of caring what people think. We could, we could lay that down and be like, God, I'm not going to care anymore what people think. Like life is too short to keep being concerned about, does that person like this? Does this person like it? It's like life is too short. And I want to be free from that and just have the audience of one. I just care about him. And if he likes it, that's cool. And if we can embrace, this is 1 Corinthians 4.10, 
that we are fools for Christ, then we could actually embrace being a fool for Christ. Because a lot of times, like for example, if we want to share a word with a stranger, we're thinking, well, they're going to think I'm a fool or I'm foolish. Or, you know, look what I'm going to look like. But if we can look and embrace being a fool, then it's like you have nothing to lose. And in the Greek, the word fool, <laughs> this is in the Greek, so don't get mad at me. It means moron, to be like a moron for the Lord. Okay, so, I mean, yeah. Like Luke Holter, when he was singing in front of that lady, in front of like a thousand people, I bet a lot of people thought, this guy is a moron. But he was doing the word of the Lord. He probably didn't have the best voice, you know, but it didn't matter because he was pleasing the Father And when you obey the Holy Spirit, you actually don't just bring that person to an encounter. Everyone else, the faith level increases. Like it's not, that's why God loves to demonstrate things with the body of Christ because everyone can receive and see the kingdom of God manifest. And that's why I love, it's like, hey, let's preach, but let's demonstrate. Let's move in the power of God. Let's move in miracles, you know, and it gives Jesus all the glory. We don't need to shy back. We can go for it. And a lot of times these miracles happen when we step outside of the boat. You know, I can be very comfortable for me personally, and I can just speak this good, well-spoken you know, spoken sermon. But it's like a lot of times the gifts of the Spirit happen when we step out. And if we want to experience the comforter more, we got to be okay being uncomfortable. If we're never uncomfortable, it's hard to experience the comforter, you know? <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for joy. You know, I was talking to uh, my pastor friend, Keith, and he goes, you know, the, the body of Christ, the churches all over, they, the one fruit they don't embrace is the joy of the Lord. They'll embrace the love, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the long-suffering. But when there's joy happening, then people start going, oh, I don't know, is that real or is that, huh? You know, but like we need to embrace the joy of the Lord because it's our strength. You know, like we could have more just joy meetings where people get renewed. You know, I was hearing a testimony, I think Kathy Walters She was at a church, and they had so much theology. They had so much doctrine. They had so much information. But they didn't really have much of just the joy. And so they had all the right answers, but they were miserable, you know? And it's like, why do you want to come to Jesus? If, even if we're dead on prophetic, but we're miserable given the prophetic words, they're like, why do I want that? Even if it's dead on accurate words... Like the countenance should be one of our greatest testimonies. That's what Moses said. Like it's the presence of God that actually distinguishes us from everyone else. So anyways, the, the church started experiencing renewal. Where just, you know, they didn't have the longest sermons, but the joy of the Lord would just start being poured out. But this wasn't just like a meeting or two. This lasted for about a year of just the joy and the wine of his presence. And so I think a lot of times in Western Christianity, we're so used to maybe like the 45-minute sermon and all the words in Greek and like, hey, great sermon. But we need to experience, you know, the presence of the Holy Spirit and to enjoy him. And Jesus was anointed with joy above all of his companions. I think in heaven, I don't, I don't know. I think it's, it's going to be a lot of joy up there. It's not going to be like... Super miserable. <laughs> It's gonna be pretty fun. They're gonna be like, whoa, dang. <laughs> And I heard that same lady, she was saying, hey, the angels, the angels are attracted to joy. And the joy actually makes us light. You know, it lifts burdens off when we laugh. You can literally laugh off burdens. Like you're, you're having a lot of stress. You just laugh, you just bring the joy and it lifts off the burdens and the weight and the, and the stress of life. The only thing that should weigh us down is his presence. You know, the presence of the Lord. 
not the burden, not the stress. I know that happens in life. We understand that, you know. But it's like God does not want us to wear that. He wants us to be light. The yoke is easy. Even with five jobs or whatever, the burden is light still. The yoke is easy. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I'm going to share. So when Jesus, you guys remember the story when he came to the fig tree and he cursed it because it wasn't bearing fruit, but it wasn't even in the right season to bear fruit. So normally, like, you look at a fig tree and if it's not in the right season, you're not thinking, like, that's weird because it's not supposed to bear fruit during off season. But I believe this is a prophetic word for believers that we should always be bearing fruit even in the wilderness season or the dry time that Jesus says you should always be bearing fruit because we're connected to Jesus and not the circumstances of life. If circumstances I'm connected to, then that determines my joy. But if Jesus I'm connected to, that determines my joy or my peace. And so anyways, he cursed it and then... And <laughs> Mark eleven twenty, it goes, Now in the morning as they passed by, the disciples saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And so Jesus isn't surprised by this. This is like, hey, this is normal stuff when you hang out with me. <laughs> and so Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, or surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done. And he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and they will be yours. So a lot of times we look at a mountain of life, let's say it's like gnarly stage four cancer, and we will look at it and then we're focused on the mountain rather than Jesus. And so a lot of times we keep talking about a mountain, my faith is going to go down. But Jesus, in verse 22, he says, have faith in God. But in the original translation, it means have faith that comes from God, that God would actually give us the faith. <clears throat> that word is pistos. That sounds weird, but that's what it is. It's always a gift from God. Never something that can be produced by people is this kind of is faith. God's divine persuasion and therefore distinct from human belief. The Lord continually bursts faith in the yielded believer so they can know what he prefers. Always receive from God and not generated by us. So like we're saying, hey, you need more faith, you need more faith, and then we try harder to get more faith. But this is faith where God persuades you with more faith. He actually will persuade you. Let's say you get a dream about someone getting saved, and then your friend gets a vision or whatever, and then they get saved. So this, these things happening persuade you that it's going to happen. You know, you're going to have more faith. And so I don't know, just realizing like even with Ariel, with this miracle happening, it's like we could focus on this, and it's like, or we could focus on Jesus bringing the miracle and then saying, Jesus, you, this is so easy for you. Like, I don't know, a lot of times we focus on the pain or the problem and it's, it's real life stuff. But realizing Jesus, like if he spoke the world into existence, then there's nothing that's too hard for you. Like, it's easy, you know, like, and then you go into praise and thanksgiving I think that's a good way to approach a mountain. You start with thanksgiving and praise. Instead of going straight to the mountain, we go to thanksgiving and praise. If someone needs crazy deliverance, we go into, God, you are the best deliverer ever. You have delivered millions of people from drugs, whatever it is. Or if someone needs a crazy miracle, you go into thanksgiving, God, you've, you've done miracles all, you know, you just go into that place. And I don't know, it just gets me excited for what the Lord is about to do. I don't know. It's better to be in a place of like, I don't have this figured out, God. Like, you just show me what to do. Like, he's like the wind of the Holy Spirit. One night he could show up as, you know, the wine where people get hit with joy. But another night he could show up as the miracle worker and the miracles happen. Another night he could show up as the prophet and people are prophesied over. 
Another night he shows up as the great teacher. And so a lot of times we come to maybe a service and we kind of expect the same thing. But what if we're like, God, you're the wind and you like to reveal yourself in any way you want to come. You know, like how are you going to show up next time? He's already here, but it's more about how are you going to reveal yourself? How are you going to manifest yourself? <clears throat> you know, maybe it's like, I don't know. <laughs> so Leonard Ravenhill says, if we displease God, does it matter whom we please? If we please him, does it matter whom we, whom we displease? <clears throat> A.W. Tozer, I claim the holy right to disappoint men in order to avoid disappointing God. <clears throat> Charles Spurgeon, you and I cannot be useful if we want to be sweet as honey in the mouths of men. God will never bless us if we wish to only please men, that they may think well of us. Are you willing to tell them what will break your own heart in the telling and break theirs in the hearing. If not, you're not fit to serve the Lord. You must be willing to go and speak for God, though you'll be rejected. <clears throat> I mean, I'm just thinking like what the Central Coast needs. Like I'm born and raised here. We need to see the power of God demonstrated. Maybe we've heard a lot of amazing sermons like for God wants to demonstrate the kingdom. He wants healings and miracles to break out. Yeah. <clears throat> he says enough is enough. He says there's been too much long waiting that he wants to demonstrate the power of God. And so like, I don't know. Instead of like waiting God, like when is the time? He says the time is now. Let's just go for it. Let's just step out of the boat. And if you, let's just say you pray for someone and they don't get healed. It's like the same thing as if you shoot a basket and you don't make it. And then you're like, well, I guess I'm never going to play basketball again. No, you keep knocking. Yeah. And so if it takes you 50 times to, until the miracle happens, you go for it. I mean, that's happened with Ariel. Literally, I kept feeling the Holy Spirit. Go pray again. Go pray again. It happened like nine times. And persistence is key to seeing miracles happen. Yeah. You don't just do it one time. Oh, I guess God doesn't want to heal. No, you just you'd knock until that door comes down. Yeah. When the, they asked Jesus how to pray, this was, he told a story. He goes, it's a friend that comes to a friend at midnight, and he knocks on the door, and the friend doesn't get up because he's a good friend, but because of his audacious persistence, he's going to give him whatever he needs. And I think a lot of times we knock three times, and then we give up, and then we're like, all right, we're done. But like the audacious, it's actually shameless audacity of like you just keep knocking and that, till that door is down. And so whatever that thing you've been praying for, whatever that miracle you've been going for, like just bang harder. Maybe start shouting a little bit louder. Maybe that gentle whisper isn't going to cut it out. Maybe you got to wake up at 12 o'clock in the morning and, and just yell. Because it was at midnight that that story happened. Maybe at midnight, just like cry out to the Lord. Like that person that needs salvation or whatever, just like be bold with the request. Yeah. And like, yes, Jesus is the lamb, but he's the lion. And maybe God's asking for the lions to rise up and just to be persistent. <clears throat> I'm almost done. Um, hmm. I'm going to just do a little bit of ministry. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray just for, it's Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that the power of God to be a witness. And so it's not about just trying harder. We literally need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be a powerful witness. But also with healings and miracles to follow. I don't want to just preach the word without the power of God. And so I'm just going to pray this. Acts 1.8, and then, yeah, just put your hand in your heart. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be a witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so, Father, we ask for the dunamis power of God for every person here. God, we ask to be a powerful witness. 
God, we, we actually repent for the fear of man. God, forgive me for fearing man more than you, for worrying what people think more than you, Jesus. Yeah, God, we ask that you would anoint us to be a witness. It's not something we have to do an hour a week. It's actually who we are, wherever we are, whatever work we're at, that we are we're already a witness. And God, I pray that you would set us free from keep looking inward and introspection to look outward to you and to others. Yeah, God, we just thank you for freedom. Yeah, God, we embrace being a fool for Christ. A looking foolish. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we just embrace that. Hmm. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your voice. Thank you for joy that's hitting Stephanie over there. Um, so a couple months ago, I'm going to just give a couple words, but a couple months ago, I was led just to pray in the Holy Spirit for an hour straight. I drove the Cayucas and I had some coffee because that does help, like keep it going. And so I literally prayed for an hour straight, shut up, you know. <laughs> And, but it says when you pray in tongues, you actually unlock mysteries of, from the Lord. And so there's mysteries that are, need to be unlocked, but they happen when you pray in the Holy Spirit. And so anyways, during the last year prior, you know, I was dealing with just, just oppression. Like I felt literally like spiritual oppression. I felt like demonic stuff for about a year. And I tried to get prayer. I tried to get all these things and, and nothing really was happening. So during this time, I prayed for an hour straight in the Holy Ghost, and I came back home, and I, I sat on my bed, and I had a vision of Jesus washing my feet. And I'm thinking, what does this mean? He wa he's washing my feet. And then the Holy Spirit said that when you went to Thailand about a year and a half ago, <laughs> I'm not going there. Okay. If you were there last Wednesday, we were talking about Thailand. Anyways, the joy was happening. But this is an important thing, so. But I'm okay with that. God's okay with that, too. Uh, yeah. Uh-oh, something's about to start again. Okay. Okay, I'm trying. I'm going to try on this one. Okay. Someone, is, someone just hit a button right there. Okay. Oh, great. This might be tough. This is part of the ministry time, I think, is the joy. It's like, we want the accurate words, but God wants to release the joy. And I thought Stephanie was over there, but now she's here. So you, did you teleport? Okay. Wow. Um, wow. So anyways, this was at Thailand that I, uh, I picked up something, like you walk through stuff, and you literally need to wash your feet from what you walk through. So you go into foreign countries and you need Jesus to wash you off. And so anyways, in Thailand, you know, there was this spirit of fear that like latched on to me and I didn't know what it was and it was like a familiar spirit. Anyways, I prayed in the Holy Ghost for an hour and then Jesus said, you need to wash your feet. And so I simply said, Jesus, like wash me. Anything that I, I went to in Thailand, anything that I washed clean. And literally, it broke off. And so the very thing that I was dealing with for a year, is literally a year, and I felt it, I would feel. Um, and so I, a lot of times we're doing the same thing. We're running in the mount, around the mountain, running around the mountain, running around the mountain. And God is saying, you need to go in the Spirit and break things off and unlock mysteries that I have for you that are solutions to your continual problem, to your continual mountain. And so instead of just having a five minute, maybe prayer in tongues, go for 30 minutes, go for an hour. I mean, if we watch the news for three hours or whatever, or do social media for four, we can at least do an hour of praying in tongues. And you might not get anything that very moment, but you're sowing the seed to receive maybe an hour, maybe a week later, maybe start getting dreams like a week after that. Um, 
And so I just feel like to minister to people, they feel like they're going around a mountain, going around a mountain, going around a mountain. But I feel like the Lord said, pray in tongues, but for a, a long time, and then just see what happens after. Expect something to shift. Expect the keys to unlock the prison doors. And, and then so then I had a dream last night that it was my sister, I'm not sure if she's watching, but she was reading this biography of this man of faith. And she was like on the sixth chapter and like the fifth page in, there was this man of God that was getting promoted by the Lord. He was doing the same thing, but the Lord said now is the time of promotion. And a lot of times we're, we can by natural default, we try to get promoted, but the Lord says don't seek promotion. Promotion comes from the Lord and not from man. And, and actually if we seek promotion, that's actually gonna delay promotion. Promotion does not come from the north or the south, it comes from the Lord. And so I just feel like that was just a word for anyone here that maybe you're trying to seek promotion or be seen or be known, but it's like the Lord says, I'll take care of the promotion. You take care of, of actually being humble before him. Um, and I actually feel like there's going to be like certain jobs that are actually going to open up even this week for people of like upgrades or even just a new job. Like, hey, here's this. Um, and yeah, Lord, we just thank you that you're the one that promotes people. Hmm. And also, I feel like there's someone with nerve damage. Maybe it's in your back, but there's nerve damage that Jesus wants to heal. If that's you, just raise your hand or you can sit right over here. Okay. What's your name? Okay, is it cool, cool if we pray for you? Okay. Can we just stretch out our hands to you? What was your name one more time? Sorry. Rosalie, wow. Father, we thank you for Rosalie. And God, we just thank you that you're the healer right now. And we just speak divine healing to Rosalie. We just say all nerve damage be fully restored into complete alignment in Jesus' name. Yeah, all the way. Yeah, all the way, Lord. Hmm. Hey God, we just thank you. I feel like actually there's promotion coming for you. I don't know if you've been experiencing any suffering or anything, but God sees that. He's seen the tears. And Lord, thank you for, for bringing, uh, you actually reward your sons and your daughters for suffering. I thank you for promotion coming to Rosalie. Whatever that looks like, maybe it's in the spiritual realm, maybe it's in the natural, maybe it's both. Yeah, God, I feel like God's going to start visiting you with dreams at night, too. Lord, so we just thank you. Yeah, thank you for provision. Supernatural provision. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Does anyone need a significant miracle tonight? Just like a very, like maybe it's just something that's very, you're almost desperate. Is that anyone here? Okay. Anything? What is that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then what was yours? Drive by shooting. Okay. Okay. And what's his name? Fernando. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Father, right now, we just thank you for Fernando, God. We thank you that you're the miracle worker. So, right now, we just use the authority that you've given us and we release healing over Fernando in Jesus' name. We ask that supernaturally that those wounds would actually heal right now in the spot, that actually the doctors would witness this, that even come to the Lord. We thank you for healing angels right now coming to Fernando in that room. God, we thank you for accelerated healing in Jesus' name. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you. Yeah. Hmm.
Yeah, God, we just thank you for tonight. And I'm just thinking of, uh, <clears throat> this is the last thing. Today is the 23rd, which is the 23rd Psalm, that he makes us lie down beside still waters and green pastures. And so, God, any stress, any anxiety that people have been experiencing, God, we thank you for Psalm 23, that you make us lie down in green pastures. Yeah, God, we just ask for your supernatural peace of rest. Yeah, I just God, I just pray for all worry for the future, for what's going to happen. We just bind that up. That's not from the Lord. We thank you for supernatural rest. That even people that are experiencing um, not being able to sleep at night, we pray for supernatural rest for people. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen.